It's been just a year since Japan reopened its borders to international travel after the pandemic, and tourism has rebounded in ways almost no one could have predicted, setting up a potential record break in 2024. This makes sense because the Japanese yen is so cheap right now, so it feels like a bargain to come to Japan and enjoy what this country has to offer at a discount. Many people fall in love with Japan after their trip. Upon their return to their home country, they vow to come back and maybe live in Japan. Maybe you're one of those people. As a Japanese national who grew up in Japan and worked in three different countries, I can assure you that Japan is a great place to live. The delicious food, the beautiful four season, maybe except for the summer. The respect and politeness of the people, the cleanliness of the country in general, the toilet seats, you name it. But if you're thinking about working in Japan, let me tell you from my personal experience, That Japan is a very difficult country to work in, especially for a company. At least that's my personal experience. So, if you're thinking about moving to Japan for work, make sure you watch this video because I'm gonna share five reasons why you might not want to work in Japan. If you're new here, my name is Shu. On this channel, I talk about Japan, real estate investing, and financial freedom, and maybe something else next week. If you enjoy the content on my channel, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button below. It really helps the channel grow, and I'd really appreciate it. All right, let's get started. The first reason why not to work in Japan. Japan、is the weak currency. I just did a video on this, but the Japanese yen was one of the worst performing major currencies in 2022, and it hasn't recovered in 2023. For most of the last decade, one USD was between 100 and 120 yen or so, but for the past two years, it's been averaging 130 yen plus. And these days, it's close to 150 yen. If it goes down to 152 yen, that would be a 33 year low. So this might not seem like a big deal if you get a job and live in Japan because it doesn't really affect your day to day life. Life if you stay in the country. But if you're moving from another country, the chances are you want to travel outside of Japan or at least go back to your home country every now and then. Because the Japanese yen is very weak against other major currencies, your international trips will feel very, very expensive. Unless you're planning to stay in Japan without traveling abroad for the foreseeable future or have ways to earn money in other stronger currencies, you will probably feel like you're not making as much as you're in your home country. Some people are fine with it, but for the most, the impact. Is pretty big, so keep that in mind. The second reason is the commute. Japan has a great transportation system, and chances are you'll be taking the train to get to work. The average commute time in Japan is one hour and 19 minutes per day, which is about 40 minutes each way, and you'll be spending most of that time on the train. During peak hours, the train will be extremely crowded and people will squeeze and push others, especially in Tokyo. If you're not used to this, this can be very stressful. I absolutely hated this part of my commute when I was going into Tokyo for work, especially in the summertime. Some companies introduce flex time systems in which employees can start work earlier or later to prevent crowded trains. But to be honest, I don't think it's very effective. What about remote work? Japanese companies are notorious for not promoting remote work, especially. After the pandemic. According to this article, about 40% of people surveyed in Japan found their productivity going down when working remotely, and the global average was only 13%. So, unless you live very close to work and can't walk or bike to work, you most likely be taking the train to get to work. And it can be a very stressful experience, at least it was for me. The third reason is the gender gap. Unfortunately, it's still very uncommon for women to be a board member or executive member in Japan. In 2023, Japan was ranked 125th in the 146 country global gender gap index, which is the lowest rank the country has ever received. It's pretty depressing. The question is, how is this happening? There are several factors that contribute to this, but the main reason is the work culture that most Japanese companies have. It's called Nenko Joretsu System. This term in Japanese is self explanatory, but let me explain in English. Nenko means years of service, and Joretsu means ranking order. So, in a nutshell, the longer you serve for a company, the higher rank you are. In a way, it makes sense because you should be better at your job if you're doing it longer than Taro Suzuki, who just joined the company last year. But it's not often the case. Many People outperform those who have been with the same company for many more years than them because they have previous experience and character traits that make them more productive workers. But many companies in Japan don't really acknowledge this. For example, in general, if you work for a typical Japanese company, you get your salary increase according to your age and how long you've been with the company, not your performance. Because of this culture and the gender stereotyping that mothers should take time off of work to take care of their newborn child while fathers should continue to work. 
men get rewarded for staying with the company longer. I'm not saying that it's not possible for women to take a leadership role in business and politics. It's definitely possible. I'm just saying that from what I've seen and experienced, odds are stacked against them. And that's why there is a massive gender gap in the Japanese workplace. I know most of my audience on this channel is men. If you're a man and watching this, you might be thinking, Japan is a big gender gap. Maybe that works better for me. I want to warn you. A big gender gap doesn't really help anyone. It also means that there are rigid gender expectations for men. So you're expected to perform in a certain way by society because you're a man. It doesn't mean you have to, but when you decide to go against those expectations, you feel discomfort. Trust me, I've been there many times. But if you can't handle the discomfort, it's totally worth it. The fourth reason is long hours. There's something you need to know about working overtime for a company in Japan as a full time employee. Most Japanese employers draft their contracts in a way so that you are expected to work overtime in advance. This is called Minashi Zangyose or fixed overtime payment. For example, if your expected overtime is specified as 40 hours per month in the employment contract, you will not receive overtime pay unless you work more than the stated overtime hours. In other words, if you work between 0 and 40 hours in excess of the base pay hours stipulated in your contract, you won't receive any additional overtime pay. But if you work more than 40 hours in excess of your stipulated base pay hours, you will be entitled to receive additional overtime pay for the number of extra hours you work. For some of you, this might make total sense. I mean, basically you get paid for the work you do no matter how many hours you work, right? True. And I believe it should be that way. But when a contract is drafted in this way, it can also allow the employers to make the employees work overtime without additional pay. I've been on both sides, the employer and the employee. This can work well as an employer because you don't need to pay overtime. But as an employee, you are expected to work overtime for the same pay. So if you work for a company with a culture that expects you to work long hours because of this, know that you'll probably not get paid for the overtime. The final reason not to work in Japan is the working culture. This is the biggest reason why I chose not to go back to the corporate world after I was let go of my last full-time job in 2022. It's a little bit hard to explain because I'm not against the hustle culture. I think there are certain seasons in your life where you need to or want to hustle and go all in on work. I also think there are certain seasons in your life where you want to stop and smell the roses. I don't really believe in having work-life balance all the time. I think we're constantly balancing life. It's completely okay to devote yourself to work for a period of time or maybe all the time if that's what you want. I'm all about being all in on something, but that doesn't mean you're consumed by something. That is a big difference between those two. You can still be all in on something and have boundaries, but when you're consumed by something, that's all you do and think about all the time. When I was working for a company in Japan, I felt like my work consumed me. I would spend most of my day going to work, actually working, and thinking about work every day. And that was kind of expected by society as well. From my observation, many people in Japan live to work, not the other way around. More often than not, the title they have at work is their biggest identity in life. I'm not saying that's wrong, it just didn't serve me. Out of the three countries, Japan, the US, and Hong Kong I've worked in, Japan by far has the strongest culture that work is life. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy working and I could work a lot and I do very often. But I personally don't enjoy working in an environment where work is everything all the time. To give you a perspective, let me give you an example. Paid leave is available for employees in Japan, but many feel that the atmosphere created at work is restrictive on how much of it you can take. According to the government's research, employees in Japan only took 58.3% of annual leave in 2022. So that's more than 40% of annual leave not being taken. This could mean a few things. One, Japan has a working culture where taking time off is looked down on. Two, Japanese workers are highly unproductive that they can't take time off. And three, Japan doesn't have enough workforce so employees need to work more. Personally, I think it's a combination of all of them. Regardless, it's not a good feeling to take time off when you feel like you shouldn't be taking it. So if this kind of work culture doesn't sound appealing to you, you might want to consider if working in Japan is for you. So what can you do? It sounds like I'm complaining about the system in Japan which I'm not because I learned a lot 
of great business skills from working for companies in Japan, which led me to start my own business. So if these points that I mentioned don't bother you, Japan might be a great place to work. I just needed to figure out what I wanted to do after I lost my job, and I decided to change my career into teaching and entrepreneurship. It was a scary thing to do at the time, but I'm also thankful that I chose this path. I know it's easier for me to say this because I live in Japan and I'm a Japanese national. So what can you do? I think it depends. If you're just entering the workforce and don't have many skills, I think getting a job at an international company might be a good option. Sometimes certain types of recruiting jobs don't require you to speak much Japanese. So those companies often hire non-Japanese speakers and you can make very good money if you perform well. If you already have certain skills, I think starting a service-based business might work out for you. Consulting, coaching, and teaching don't require a lot of capital to get started, and you can essentially work from anywhere. If you start a company, you can potentially sponsor yourself with a business manager visa, which I did a video on, so make sure to check it out after finishing this video. If you wanna stay in your home country and start building a rental portfolio in Japan, it's a great time to do it now because the yen is very weak and you can get pretty decent properties on the cheap, like under $100,000. If you're serious about buying property in Japan, I just launched the most comprehensive course on how to buy property in Japan in English. You'll learn everything you need to know about how to buy property in Japan, whether you want to build a rental portfolio or buy a vacation home. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor and share this video with someone who might like this too. And if you want to learn how to buy a cheap property in Japan as a foreigner, I put together a free guide that will help you own your dream house or get started with real estate investing in Japan. Click the link below in the description and be sure to watch this video next for more. See you in the next one.